in this video i'll show you how to load a website within your model driven app using the iframe url control and with some of javascript magic so this is a simple model driven app which i have created ahead of time now what i'm going to do i'm going to open this model driven app in uh, model driven app form uh, in an editor mode and now here uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to add a new tab so I'll just go into one column tab. I'll click on one column tab and then it will add a tab. Now this tab, I'm gonna call this as uh, URL, okay? And I, I, I can name it properly like URL web. So this has one section in it. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add uh, a URL field which I have already created. So URL field is basically uh, a text field okay uh, now as you see over here the logical name is glc underscore url so this field here you will specify the url and on basis of that url a, a website will be loaded so let me just hide the label and i will add another another one column or not a one column tab i don't want that so let me delete this so let me delete this tab uh, what I want is one column section. So I'll add a one column section over here. And this is a one column section. Now here, this is again, I'll hide the label. And here I will load the iframe. So let's find out where the iframe is. So, so let's go into components and display. Now you will not directly find uh, iframe. So basically uh, there are various control like external website use this control to add an iframe control to the form so if you add this external website over here it will basically allow you to upload uh, like basically render a website now simple example what i'm going to do in the site url i'm going to use my website name so we need some uh, default website name now i can use any uh, url so i'll just pick up science.nasa.gov for a moment i'll click on done and then it will load that website okay now depending on the size uh, the length i can select the column uh, or i can select basically in the section uh, how how I want to render I want one column or I want it as two column so if it's two column then it will be you know, squished into 50 percent let me keep it one column uh, and then I'll select this control now see I'm not selecting the section I'm selecting this control and here with the component height instead of six rows I will just increase it to maybe 19 rows just to surrender the entire website okay or maybe you can increase it to 25 rows okay so this will render the entire website so this is how you basically render a website okay so i'll just click on save and publish and <clears throat> once you save and publish this website will be uh, loaded in one of the tab now this is remember this is hard coded so we have just hard coded the website name because that's required, that's an input parameter, which is required when you um, add that control. So if you see here, this will load the website. So this is how you basically can load a website, which allows iframe embedding, okay? Now, what if I want to make it dynamic? What if I want to type in here something, and then once I type in something, so take for example, if I just type in gerishupal.com, then it should load gerishupal website if i type in any other website it should load it and load it dynamically so how do i go about and do that so for that what you need to do is like you need to create a javascript now in order to create a javascript what we'll do is like we will use vs code uh, now here uh, i have an option to file i'll just say new file and this time the file name i'll call it as uh, planet uh, iframe.js so this is my simple uh, js file so I'll just save it in uh, downloads and from here I'll start writing the code. So I'll write this code very quickly. I'll say function set iframe URL and I'm going to pass an execution context. So this is like the stock standard thing which you need to remember when you start writing JavaScript. So I'll make use of form context. So where form context equal to execution context dot get form context.
and once you get the form context then uh, you need to uh, create a variable called as var url so url is the the variable which will store the actual url which you type in the text box so form so var url i'll just say form context dot get attribute okay so i'll get the attribute and from here i need to type in the the logical name of the uh, form control so for here i will go to the level up get the logical name and this is the logical name glc underscore url so i'm good with that so i'll just paste this over here glc underscore url dot get value now the function name i can set it anything now in this case i'm setting it for say planet url so i can change it to iframe url or set maybe let's me let me just write it set planet url okay so this is the function name which is which we are going to refer it uh, in the future uh, now then what you need to do is like form context dot get control now you need to get the control uh, now which is that control so you need to get that iframe control and you need to just say dot set src in setting the source of what of the url so i'll just type in url this is a variable name and that's it now get control of this iframe now in order to get that control you need to be very careful when you get that control now uh, say this control name iframe control name so if you go into this information form over here this one you know now the name of this uh, iframe control is over here you know so if i just say i'll just name it iframe underscore new underscore planet url okay so now remember this is not just the name new underscore planet url the entire thing iframe underscore new planet url is the name okay so you need to be very careful uh, while making those changes so new underscore planet url so what i'm going to do i'll just copy this over here and i frame underscore and I'll paste this new underscore planet url so let's see the js set planet url execution context and you get the context you get the url uh, and then you set the source so i'll just click on save planet iframe.js what we can do uh, over here is uh, i have already created solution ahead of time so i will add i'll just say new more web resource choose the file mm, planet iframe.js open and i'll click on save once the web resource jscript is added into your solution uh, you can just go ahead and publish it so this was the previous publish i'll just close this so this is planet iframe so what i'm going to do i'll just click on publish over here so now my js will be published once it is published it will show you publish succeeded now we have made some changes over here so we need to publish this as well but what we are going to do we are going to first hook the js so what i want is this particular field if something changes if someone changes over here so i selected this i go to events and i will set the url okay so i will set the iframe url now for me if i go into so let me delete this this was a previous one so events if i select event handler i will add the library which i have added so let me search for planet or what did i name it iframe So the name of is planet iframe is gcop underscore planet iframe gcop underscore planet iframe I just add this and I will select the name as planet iframe is a library planet iframe is a library and within that the name of the function is set planet url and i'm passing the execution context so 
I'm passing the execution context. Oh, it's not copied. So set planet URL. It's not allowing me to copy neither type. So let me discard this first and I will add an event handler. I'll select planet iframe. I know it's not allowing me to edit. Let me discard this. First click on save and publish. And let's try it again. Add an event handler planet iframe yes now it is allowing me to add so let me copy this set planet url select plan okay pass execution context as first parameter click on done so on change of this particular field i want this iframe to be loaded so that's set planet url and once that is done i'll just click on save and publish so let's see uh, whether it loads the website correctly or not so if it does not, then we may need to go back to the JavaScript and start troubleshooting what has happened. Uh, okay. So let me go back to level up. Yep. So if I click on Earth over here, so I'm going into one of the planet, go to URL. Here it is loading this website by default because which we have set. Now this time I'm going to just type in Gerish. Com. I'll click on save and once that is done as you see over here it has loaded this website in this uh, iframe I can go ahead and change it to any other website now this is the name of one of the company so I'll just say circo.com.au and it will load that website now remember it won't load everything it will load all this animation it will load all the bots for your website but not all the website is you it supports you know so if i just say type in microsoft.com and i click on save some website may not allow you to embed within that iframe okay so if i just type in say google.com it will not allow but uh, if i just type in nasa so let's let's see nasa gov and this is nasa.gov website so if i just go into the form over here and nasa.gov click on save and nasa allows us to embed the website so so that means uh, this is how you basically use a javascript and iframe to embed a website within your model driven app. Now, this is useful when you are showcasing some information with regards to various external sources, like say, if you have content from Wikipedia and then you want to have a, a preview for the user as well, just to uh, just allow them to browse through the website, then this is a nice option. So what you can do with this website is like, you just uh, type in the URL and then you can actually, you know, browse through the website. So if I just click on all NASA news, it will open that website within that particular frame. Now I'm maximizing this. So what we are doing is we are inside the context of a record and then we are uh, basically using uh, this particular iframe to load the content. So there are multiple use cases. Now I've just sh shown it in the full screen view. You can put it in one column, two column, three column view, and then you can get to show the mobile app related content as well. So so multiple use cases uh just go ahead and play around with it and then you can do all many other things uh, with the help of javascript which will allow you to you know set the website or set the iframe url uh, within the context of a model driven app thanks for watching